Join me in the call to worship, please. The world around us changes every day. You, O oh God, God, are steadfast and sure. We move about, we change our minds and our addresses. You, O oh Lord, are the same, the same yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. We praise you, O oh God, ageless, eternal, and everlasting. That's correct. I need the every hour. Number 638. I need the every hour. of your love. And so, Father, as this year comes to an end, we are acknowledging now that we are still in need. We have not outgrown or outlived our need and our desire for your love. And so we ask, Father, as this year ends and a new one is about to begin, that your love would be ever present in our lives. That is our hope and our prayer together today as we lift our prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught our disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise God, from whom all blessings flow. our sins are forgiven, and not our sins only, but also the sins of the whole world. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord, Lord as, as we, we face, face the end, end of another, another year, year, we look, we look back, back in wonder at what has become of the last 12 months. We, we have plans that ran around, hopes that were not fulfilled. Despite our neglect and distraction, you were with us at every misstep, every bend in the road, every misguided attempt to serve you. Your grace held us intact and prevented further mistakes. Help us face the coming year, knowing that you never abandon or forsake us. In Christ we pray. Amen. The Lord is steadfast and ever faithful. He will provide for us and show us his grace. Know that he loves you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today is a reading from Deuteronomy. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It is a land the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you, and he will shut the heavens so that it will not rain, and the ground will yield no produce, and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord has given you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your forefathers, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Six four two, abide with me.
was in high school, I was on the track team, but trust me, I was no sprinter. I was no speedster. And I, I failed at hurdle and high jump as well. But long distance running was all right. But I was always envious of those guys that could run the 100 meters in a flash. And I would watch them at the beginning of the race, the runners are ready. And shaking their arms, stretching their legs, taking deep breaths, and then they lower themselves into the starting block and they wait for the gun. The things look different at the end of the race. Their arms are ragged, their legs are wobbly, and they're gasping for breath. In fact, many I know didn't make it to the finish line because they would see that they were soon out distance and they just began to jog off to the side. We aren't much different in terms of how we run our races. We begin our race each year with very good intentions. We begin with new resolutions, new plans, dreams, aspirations, hope for what is yet to come. By the time we reach Christmas, we're worn out, we're wiped out, we're done in, and we're ready to say, enough, I've had enough. Or like our good friend Popeye said, that's all I can stands, I can't stands no more. <laughs> and you know, since March of 2020, you know, every year as it ended, and we always say, next year's gotta be better than that. <laughs> and sure enough, it has been. And so as we look forward to 2023, we hope that it will indeed be even better than this. But how we live our life is so much different than that of our eternal God. The Hebrew writer says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our text today proclaims that that's not just with Jesus. That is true about the triune God. God, our Father, is just as faithful and steadfast and without change. He makes a sovereign promise to the people of God as they're making their way into the wilderness, that he will keep watch over his people continually. Now these words are uttered to God's servant Moses, and he records them and lets the people know that God will be with them as they make their way through the wilderness and into the land of promise. Moses states that God watches over them from the beginning of the year to the end, that he would provide all that they needed. And he specifically mentions the early and late rains that may not have been quite as big an issue in the wilderness as it was when they finally reached the land of promise and they became what was for the first time this nation, an agrarian people who relied upon such things, the changing seasons and whatever each season brought. But in the interim, God still provided throughout the wilderness. Just think of the word manna, quail, water. He provided all that they needed day and night. But he gave them some warnings. He cautioned them that temptations <coughs> would come. And as their history proved, it, temptations often were more than they could withstand. Just, I got two words for you, golden calf. <laughs> Are we any different? <coughs> Are we any different? Though Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, we are aware that temptations surround us. We never outgrow or outlive those. Temptations have always been present for anyone. Peter cautions us 
your enemy, the devil, is prowling about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And we know that the Apostle Paul warned Timothy, if you desire to live a godly life, you will be persecuted, which turns some people away from godly living. So what are we to do? Because we too have been warned. But we would do well to accept the guidance of a gracious God, just like he offered to the people of Israel in the wilderness. Fix these words. Hold fast to these statements. And by that he meant the law of Moses, and so they did so. They fixed those words as daily reminders. Some were able to make leather pouches. We refer to those in the, in the text as phylacteries, and they would wear those around their neck with small portions of the Hebrew script within to remind them, to be right in front of them, that wherever they were headed, they knew that God's word was right there with them. He told them to write them on their foreheads and on their hands. They were instructed to teach the children as they walked daily. And that was part of that early prayer that they were to say hear O Israel the Lord your God is one and to teach that to their children eventually that led to what we are now familiar with as young boys and girls in the Hebrew faith grow up and they become what are called the sons of the law and they have their bar mitzvah or the girls the bat mitzvah they are children under the laws that were decreed even in Moses' day. They were told to place these on their doors and on their gates, and so they did, inscribing the text on door frames and on gate posts so that they would be reminders as they came and went that God was present and that God would provide and that God would protect. And again, God offers the promise as they do that that your days may be many in the land. That was his blessing. That was his promise. I'll be there with you. I'll protect you. I won't be far away if you'll do as I said. Now, we may not live under the same laws and prescriptions that they did as Moses received and handed down to them in Leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy and, and all of the things that were contained in their laws but we would do well to do as they've been instructed we would do well to never forget it to make that a part of our daily lives what God has instructed us because his word belongs in our hearts not just on our foreheads not just on our hands, not just on our door frames, but a daily part of what we do. Fixing these words in our hearts. In a survey several years ago, it was revealed the average American in their lifetime will spend six months sitting at stoplights, eight months opening junk mail, one year looking for misplaced objects, two years unsuccessfully returning phone calls, four years doing housework, six years waiting in line, and six years eating. Now, if you sleep eight hours a day, if you live to be age 90, you sleep for 30 years. Move over Rip Van Wrinkle. How will you spend your day? your hours as the old year ends how will you spend your time as the new year begins again God's promise your days will be many if you do these things Martin Luther said I have so much to do today I'll spend the first three hours in prayer how many of us Go to that extent. Carl Sandburg, poet and historian, commented, time 
is the coin of your life. It is the only coin you have, and only you can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest you let other people spend it for you. What will God do as we spend our coins, our time? If we invest that coin in Him, time with God, time with His Word, time in His presence, then He will do just what He promised. I will watch over you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you give us a chance, you, you give us opportunity, you give us a will so that we might choose to follow you. It's not a demand, it's not a command. You leave us that choice. Father, we are choosing to be in your presence even now. And we pray, Lord, that we might continue to do so. That we would be aware that you are always there. That our Emmanuel would never leave us. We thank you for that as we rejoice in song, as we remember our God of ages. Through his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Six, six, eight, six. Oh God, our help in ages past. Thank you.